You get double the insight today, by the way. Not only Mike Milbury, but Andrew Razor Raycroft has come by this morning, uh, all the way from Charleston, Massachusetts. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, did you atone for that? Uh, do, do I have to atone? I, I don't think I... You played here for of course I know. It, years, I know you don't it, know it's Charlestown? I mean, I'm I know watching, it's Charlestown. I'm sure it's my accent. I'm sure it's the way you heard it. I'm sure the way the, the way no, it cut no. out. Uh, Mike, Maybe I was thinking about... Mike, you can weigh in on this. There I am in bed uh, watching Razor between periods, and he starts talking about how the alumni did something over in Charleston. And I'm like, that Charleston is in South Carolina. <laughs> it's my accent. It's my Canadian accent. It's the Canadian accent. You know what? I yes. just can't get Calgary by Calgary is the, different than, uh, you know, whatever. I, I can't get by the fact that it's the best uh, year in Boston sports in five years. Uh and the last good one was 2019. 22 <laughs> minus 19 <laughs> is five. Is I said little, like about five years. Right? I, was, I was on the spot. Sean was a little off in his math. And there's a long way to go. Like I, um, by the way, Wiggy and and Christian and Courtney are on their way over to the to the uh, to the catch off. So um, wait, wait, wait a second. Yeah. Th- that's at Boston College. Yes, it is. Could yes. you make sure that they don't talk to my child who is a senior there because I don't want to cross contaminate those people with his <laughs> his studies. I pay 80 grand a year for that kid to go to college. I don't want them anywhere near those people. That's very reasonable. Well, the government's going to help you out with some money back. Oh no, wait, they won't. Um all right. Um so uh when it co- did you already weigh in on who you think wins by the way? Did we do that with you last week? No, I didn't. I, uh, I Wiggy's going to Wiggy's going to take it. Four has been take... up for 18 hours straight. Yeah, that's I mean, true. that's a huge yeah. disadvantage. And Mike, you said Wiggy too, right? Wait, what was the question? And why is this guy Raycroft on? This is my moment in the sun. <laughs> I'm just asking you questions, Mike. I'm not I'm not <laughs> I'm not checking in in any way whatsoever. I'm just right. asking you questions. Um so it's a catch off with the jugs machine, 15 balls each. Wiggy versus Christian Fourier. You know what? I I, I have to go with the uh, your guy, Wiggy. Yeah. Well, I mean, they have to go with him. Yeah, of course. I mean, why? He's you're on the show. Does he get a second ring if he wins this? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, yes, he does. Yes, he does. Odyssey doesn't stop at anything in spending money. <laughs> you know that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen. Uh, let's let's talk hockey a little bit here. Oh, uh, f- first and foremost. Uh, Peter McNabb passed away last week, and uh, you had the opportunity to play with him. I think that uh, actually he joined you in going over the glass in New York, if I remember, Mike. Uh, well, he, yes, he did pass away. One of the great guys in the in the game. Uh, he he got traded from from Buffalo to Boston the year that I arrived on, on the scene, and uh, one of Harrison did great trades. He made many of them, and uh, we sat side by side for. Eight and a half years, and he was a joy every day. Just a smile on his face, and and uh, came in with the best attitude. and And the guy could score goals. I mean, he just ripped the back of the net. And it's funny, uh, you know, he, he's not the kind of guy you would have thought would fit in with Don Cherry, um, who liked his players tough and mean and nasty and pit bulls, as he called us. and And he said, but. But Peter's my golden retriever amongst a, a bunch of pit bulls, and that's what he was. But yeah, I'll miss him. He was a, a dear friend and gone way too soon. Max, he was a, a great person that I had the, the the luxury to be around in Colorado. We had a terrible team, and and he was the again the only bright spot of that season was was coming on the bus and and seeing his face after games and giving giving me or, or anyone else some positive reinforcement. Great guy. Um, back to the Bruins. What what are you seeing that's repeatable for this team? What do you see that they can continue? Obviously, not fourteen and two pace, but can continue to progress and win games through this league. They click all the uh, appropriate boxes. I mean, special teams, both sides, real good. Goals for best in the league. Goals against, right there. It's amongst the best in the league. I mean, this is just. Everything is going properly, but the things that they can continue to do, and you know as a goaltender, the first thing you want to do is get somebody that stops the puck. And and Omar has been just incredible. I, I, I guess I'll ask you, how, how did that happen? What happened? What's different? I don't know what's different between the Omar of last year. Maybe there wasn't so much difference, and maybe he's just a little older, a little more mature and, and focused in, but he's just 
put a stranglehold on this job and and it's been fun to watch. It has. I, I think you nailed it. I, I think I don't think there's too much of a difference. I think he's tightened up his game technically in that he's not doing a lot. And I think that goes with experience and, and being comfortable. A lot he, of times did, as a goaltender, you really say, do nothing. Did he need to like did he need to know that he's the guy? Like, I mean, I you know, last year you had Tuca like hanging around, like you know, is Tuca com- coming back or but uh, you, and Swayman, and you, know, you know, he's the hot rookie. Like, is is there is there some sort of a confidence thing that he got? I don't think so, but it is a good the, the Tuca thing is something that I, I I forget about. It feels like that was like five years ago or maybe six years yeah. ago, Shine. <laughs> um good but, math. Yeah. But he, that probably was something hanging over. I can't imagine that was a comfortable situation all the way around. And, and they, they handled it as well as they could. But I think it just goes to, to what Mike said, his comfort level, his just that extra year of experience. And then another year playing behind this group who it, they do things a little bit differently with those four centers, the way they play defense. So uh, I, I think it's a, a combination of all those things. And it's it's been a treat to watch. It sure has. And, and- you know, the other thing that they can do is, is, and I think Jim Montgomery pointed this out, was like they can't get complacent. It's not, it's not a league where you can just sort of relax and take your foot off the gas pedal. But, you know, it's funny that he's on it. And, and by the way, you know, I never thought I'd ever see another Mr. Rogers, but if there's anybody that's going to be Mr. Rogers again, it's Jim Montgomery, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, he, he must come off the ice and, and take off his skates, put on his blue sneakers and zip up his cardigan because every every day in the neighborhood is a great day, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's just amazing how he is. And that, and that and this day and age seems to be the right approach. Or at but least what I was going to say, is that, what, is that what he was – in Dallas, or did he adjust for this team based on the way they reacted to Bruce Cassidy? You know, it's a it's a great question, Greg. I, I had uh, a conversation with Al May, who was a former player, now analyst for NBC Washington, um, just yesterday. And we were talking about Montgomery, and he said that's exactly the way he was, that he was he was just like that in Dallas, and it was, it was a, you know, upbeat, Every day, and and the players responded to it. He said, "Don't never, he'll, you'll never see him put a, a guy's name in in print for doing something wrong." He said, "That's just not who he is." He's going. Well, to then be- you got to hand it to Cam and to Donnie for going and getting the right guy for these guys. It seems that way. I mean, I, I, you know, you know, as a coach, I I know I wasn't this way. In fact, I coached my kids' bantam team for a while, and one of the kids on the team was really funny kid timmy hall and the the boys made him do an imitation of me which he did behind my back all the time and the first 15 seconds there were four f-bombs and, you know, and that, i just don't see that coming from jim montgomery mike can you tell everybody especially front office coaches when you're in that position and you're winning how much easier this league is and how much more enjoyable the NHL is when you're winning like this and how it can become very contagious very quickly and how it can go the other way as well. You've been on both sides. What the differences are in the NHL and what the front office job is like when you're winning and when you're losing. It, it's uh, the job in the front office or our coaching is incessant. It's 24 hours a day. The players come to the rink and then, well, now they get their free meals and then they go home <laughs> and, and everything is hunky dory. But the players don't realize that I mean, it's a much harder job for as a manager or coach because it just never goes away. And you're constantly thinking. But during these periods of bliss, um, you have to be careful. And I think Jim Montgomery, as I mentioned earlier, was was on it like you you can't get complacent. You have to look look for areas and and it's really hard now to find an area that they're not good at. I mean, everybody from the top six to the bottom six, which has been remarkably good and consistent, to the goaltending, to the special teams. But they're probably, if you you keep looking, and maybe a, now is a good time, actually, to go shopping. You don't really need much, but you need to be able to look for maybe another defenseman. I mean, I don't know where Strawman is and all this stuff or Riley or what's going to happen, but you know, Andrew, that during the playoffs, you got to have eight comfortably strong defensemen that you can count on because people are going to go down and it's a long run to a 
to a, a final round. So it might be a good time to look around, but it's, it's really, a, you know, it's a great time to savor as well. You have to savor these times, but you still have to be on the lookout for anything that might be in the way of a run to a championship. And one thing you don't want to do is, you know, sign controversial players, which well, they somehow <laughs> skated by. And, um, on that on that topic, Mike Mike Milbury's our guest. I, we talked a lot about this yesterday. The the Bruins uh, bring in the Loretta Lynch, the former Attorney General, and her law firm to investigate this thing. Is there? I, and I don't understand why they did. I, I mean, basically, the fans spoke up. Maybe their maybe their advertising partner spoke up. They did the right thing. It's over. It's the, this team is. Uh, on fire is the, is there a reason why they they need an internal investigation done by an outside party on this and is there is it the wrong time to do that when this team is like you said uh to to a guy uh is is winning and and enjoying the atmosphere there it's what the moment the era requires it's a different time a different age i thought cam stepped to the microphone and took the hits and made apologies. And now it's to go one step further to sort of self-flagellate here, you know, beat them over the back with whips and chains and just let's, we, we're going to be better because of this. And we're going to have somebody tell us how we should do our business. They made mistakes and they, they admitted them. And I think they could have moved on without this, but that's, you know, this is what, uh, 2022, not 2019, requires. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Shime? Uh, Mike, so the Bruins get Philly and then Chicago, but then they start quite possibly the toughest stretch they're going to have on their schedule throughout the course of the year. They get Tampa twice, Colorado twice, Vegas twice, mix in Florida and Carolina. What do you need to see from the Bruins over that really difficult stretch to know, okay, like this is it. We have a legitimate, full-on Stanley Cup competitor here. They need to obviously put points on the board. They need to be successful. They need to compete at, at, at a level that's consistent with what they've done so far. In other words, I don't expect them to be, to be, you know, 14 and two after a stretch or the, the, the equivalent percentage against these teams, but I expect them to, to be competitive at when you go this long, you start to build a sort of swagger and a confidence that you can beat anyone. And you run into a, a tough stretch like this where you could hit some skids, it could it could rattle you. And it's important that they stay focused, they rebound from losses, and there will be losses in, in that stretch, and continue to build, you know, their resume that 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 they believe in. And that's the biggest thing about this fourteen and two run is I, I love it that they started out this way because you start to believe that you you're really that good. And that confidence level is tough to shake. And that would be the thing I'd be concerned about going into a stretch as difficult as you pointed out. But I, I, you know, you can't get ahead of yourself. Philly tonight, you know, as Belichick says, on to Cincinnati. We're on to Philly. We're on to Chicago. and Take them one at a time. And they seem to be able to do that right now. And, and they'll face that stretch with, you know, I think their eyes wide open. Mike Milbury on the Harbor One Hotline. He is uh, he's on Team Wiggy for the catch-off, and we will talk to you again next week. Thanks, Mike. All right, guys. See ya. Bye, All right. Andrew. All right. Bye, Mike.